Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauties shop again. And uh, today we're gonna be working on this TR6. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this car. If you've watched my previous videos, we did uh, some electrical work on this car. The whole entire wiring harness was uh, messed up completely. So we fixed it and we did some general inspection of the car at that time and we fixed whatever we could, but there was one problem that we couldn't fix and that was the splines on the axles were really bad. So you see, there's a lot of play on them. So we didn't have axles at the time, so we didn't replace them, but uh, I found a pair of uh, pretty good used axles with uh, good splines and good U-joints, good hubs. So I called the owner, he brought the car yesterday and I replaced them. When I was replacing them, I noticed that there was a silicone. It is still under the car over there, you can see it. That blue stuff is uh, silicone that was put here around the flange. And I actually had pretty hard time taking out the flange uh, because it was stuck there. So anyways, I pulled it out and a little bit of oil came out. And I was like, hmm, where did that oil come from? Because it was right here from this cavity but the car has been oil sprayed multiple times so i thought maybe okay it's probably when it was oil sprayed somehow oil went inside there so i put the other axles no problem they are installed and um, everything went well but this morning i'm coming into the garage and there's this puddle under the car and it's coming from the same place between the two flanges the flange of the differential and the flange of the axle so that is pretty weird because how did oil get there? And how does it keep coming from there? So I spoke to the owner and we're gonna have to take out the shafts, both of them, both sides, and at least change the seals and see where the oil is coming from. So we've done that multiple times and I wasn't gonna film it, but this is a pretty interesting issue. So. I decided to make a video about it. So let's take out the axles again and see what's going on. Oh, by the way, I forgot something. Let's get cracker locking. <laughs> All right, so the axle is out and this is where the oil is coming from. Isn't that crazy? So the only thing that I can think of is probably there's no seal, like at all, or the seal is so bad. But normally if the seal is bad, then it would leak between the seal and the shaft, right? But somehow here it's leaking on this side of the flange. This is impossible to me. What I'm going to try to do is to take out the shaft. I need to remove these four bolts, one, two and three and four underneath. I'll see if I can do it from here. It's gonna be very tricky, but it's gonna be easier than removing the exhaust and removing the whole differential. So anyway, oh, by the way, look at the boat. This is the plug. <laughs> okay. Anyways, looks like we're going in. All right, one shaft is out. And to be honest, I have absolutely no explanation how oil got inside there. Through the woodroof key channel? Maybe. But the woodroof key starts after the seal, right? Because the seal is on this plate right here. So if oil goes past the seal, it's going to drip from here between this lip and the plate, right? But to me, it was from here. I'm pretty sure it was leaking from there. Anyways, we have to change the seal. So let me take it apart and see. I'm hoping that I can press this out, you know? Many times this is a big problem. Okay, it's out and I took out the nut. By the way, the washer was missing. There must be a big washer here, which is missing. So we will see what we're gonna do after. But I don't see a way that oil can come in here. So am I going crazy? I don't think so because I'm pretty sure it came from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a leak test. While I'm taking out the other one on the other side, I'm gonna 
fill this up with oil and we will see if it is going to start leaking from somewhere underneath. Ah, that's crazy. Is it possible that it goes around the woodroof key and, and the washer is what seals it there? I don't think so. We're going to have to change the seal anyways, but before that, I'm definitely going to do a leak test here. Okay, so I filled it up here to the end of the chamfer, I guess. So it's dry for now. I just filled it up. But let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go take out the other one and we're gonna leave this one for the next half an hour, one hour, whatever it takes to take out the other shaft. Okay, this is the other side and you can see it is perfectly dry inside and it has the washer. You can see the washer. Is it possible that the washer was sealing it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, now that we're changing one uh, seal, we're gonna change them both anyways. So I'm gonna take it off. All right, it's uh, about 40 minutes later. This is out and This is what we have here. So, looks like it didn't leak a lot, but it lost, it lost some of it. And you can see here where it's leaking out. And even down there, hmm. Wait a second, let me turn on the light. Leaked here, so that's before the seal or that's on the outside of the seal. I don't understand. And then down there as well. I have no idea how it came down there. Did it go through the shaft? I don't think so. Let me try something. No, nope. there's no hole here. I thought maybe if the shaft is drilled through for whatever reason, I don't know. I'm really, <laughs> I'm really puzzled here. So the only reasonable explanation is that it went through the woodroof key channel. And that's normal because it doesn't necessarily seal there because there shouldn't be oil on this side of the woodroof key. But somehow there was because, because here is the seal on this plate. So I don't know. So I'm hoping that when we replace this seal, everything is gonna be uh, okay because the, that seal is gonna stop the oil from coming on this side and then of course it's not gonna go into the wood roof key and come out of this way. That's something that I see for the first time in my life. All right, so one side is rebuilt. This is the one that wasn't leaking and I had a really hard time pushing it out on my press. Sometimes I'm not even able to and then I have, I have to go to my friend Eugene's house. He has a 50 ton press to press them out. This one came out really hard, but it came out and it's rebuilt already. This side, I barely even pushed with the press. This is the one that was leaking. I barely even pushed it and the thing is out. And I figured out what the problem is. So let me take it out completely and I'll show you. So here's where the washer is missing here we have the washer you see so we have to figure out the washer for here because obviously the washer is sealing so let me take it out so this is the seal first of all this seal is pressed way too far it's been replaced i can tell but it needs to be flush with the surface maybe they did that because they wanted to rely on the on fresher surface here but the problem is that this thing is tapered at the end so it allows eh, it goes on but anyway but the real problem here is that when this thing is all the way in here you see the channel of the the channel for the woodroof key is still on this side i thought that the channel was starting after the ceiling area but actually there is still there so 
that's where it's leaking from. It goes through the wood roof key channel and comes out of here. And apparently the washer that comes there is what seals it. Unbelievable. That's something that I didn't know so far. I didn't even pay attention to that. But now when I figured it out that this is possible to leak from there. So, what, so to avoid this in future, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to be putting sealant here before the washer so it seals here. I can't, I can't think of anything else. Couldn't believe it. So that's a bad design. And also this is a bad design that there's no gasket here on this side. There's absolutely no gasket. It just goes to the body of the diff. What seals it here? Nothing. Many times it doesn't. So what I started doing is I put sealant here so it seals well. But now what I'm going to start doing is also I'm going to start putting sealant in this area so the washer really seals it as well. That's crazy. Unbelievable. I learned something new today. All right, so I cleaned this. And actually the surface is not bad at all. So the seal can go where it's supposed to be which is on the wider side. So that's the side that goes towards the, okay. There's some dents here too, but we're gonna put gasket maker. So the small protrusion goes towards the differential. The bigger protrusion is the one that fits inside this dish like this. So that's how the seal goes with the open side towards the inside and many times it can just go by hand like this. <sighs> like usually I put it on the press, but I'm just showing you how you can do it without the press. Or if you have a soft hammer, you can also tap it in. You can even put something flat on top and hammer on that. That hurts. Just making sure that it is even. And now when it goes here, see how it rides much further in. Before it was riding somewhere here, so probably that was also not helping a lot for the sealing process. But that's perfect now. So before we do that, we're going to put some lubrication, lubrication here, not a lot, but we don't want the seal to ride on a dry surface, right? So just so it is a little bit lubricated, and that's how this goes. And now we're going to put gasket maker here. I'm going to find a washer to put there, like this one. And then we're going to torque it and we're ready. And then I'm not going to show you all that because I've shown it many times, but I'm just explaining. I'm going to put gasket maker here as well. And we're going to put that on the diff and we are done. Okay, so that's the plug. So I thought that I just put a bolt there and that would be bad, but actually they just welded a bolt to the <laughs> to the plug, so that's not too bad. Anyway, so all the the axles are installed. This one is not completely, but before I install the other half, I'm gonna top it up with oil. MT90 by Redline. That's my preferred oil for differentials and non-overdrive transmissions. And yeah, we're almost done here. All right, I just went for a test drive and just wanted to make sure that everything is okay with the shaft, you know. There's no clunks, there's nothing wrong with them. So everything went well. So that's gonna be it for today. Uh, it's a short video, but I wasn't even gonna film anything about this uh, repair, but it turned out that there was something interesting, so I decided to film that. So anyways, like I said, that's gonna be everything. Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, sharing, supporting the channel and all that good stuff. It's really appreciated. Thank you guys. Don't forget at the bottom of the video, there's uh, my online store where you can buy merchandise like t-shirts, hoodies, hats, mugs, stickers and stuff like that. 
and also if you're not member of the Rusty Beauties group on Facebook that would be a good idea if you're into these cars because there's already I think about 3,000 members sharing their experience with their cars and the new projects that they buy and they're asking questions answering questions so it is a great community to be in so Rusty Beauties on Facebook the group not the page the page I don't have access anymore so I can't even close it but the group so that's it thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one bye